Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Everyday Wholeness Show with the amazing, wonderful, fantabulous Janet Uribe and myself, Karen Stultz, where we talk about the wholeness that is you. And today, we're going to be talking about the leadership, the qualities of a whole leadership. And believe it or not, we are all leaders. So doesn't it just make sense that it would be good to be whole in your leadership? (laughs) Friends, friends. Oh, my goodness. So what's fantastic is that since yesterday, I would say like the last six to seven days, a lot of my sessions have been around leadership or certain clients and friends kind of identifying pieces of themselves that they frustrate with. And let me tell you what, I frustrate as a human. Oh, Oh. no. Well, (laughs) I I can see a lot of us do that on a regular basis. (laughs) Most people and older souls that I meet frustrate with like the obvious, right? The, The drama or the difficulty or the obstacles or the patterns that show up. And we just can't keep stop dating that same person in different form and face. So, I mean, I see that a lot, but like my struggles with humanness are to my core. I know I came here to create and produce and not be as robotic as I used to once be, but maybe part machine. (laughs) And so when it comes time to have to stop to sit and eat or stop and sit, go to the bathroom, (laughs) stop to sleep. I, I get kind of frustrated, like a little kid, like, "Mm, I don't want to, (laughs) my partner will be like, come on, let's go to bed. Like, "Mm, I'm not going, (laughs) I have stuff to do. Can't you see? And so as older souls, a lot of us come in knowing that we came here to do something. And a lot of times we'll perceive it as something really big because the brain, the knowing is big. The internal is big. The soul is big. So we frustrate <laughs> when we have to do menial tasks. If you are someone who frustrates with menial tasks, pay attention. Why? Because it doesn't resonate with you. And you might be a leader. And, and it, the thing is, with a leader, a leader inspires others to help them. Yes. A leader inspires others to do the jobs because, hey, let's be real, guys. Let's be real. We don't have all the answers. Even though we think we are the most amazing, fantastic, brilliant beings on earth, which of course we are, we still don't have all of the answers. We were each given those gifts that will make the world a better place. So focus on those gifts and get help with the rest. That's why coaches are so important. That's why Janet is an amazing mentor and coach. And that's what I do as a a mentor and coach is recognizing that we share the gifts that will benefit others. But getting it out there sometimes is a challenge. We are all leaders. Sometimes we have to be followers, learning from others, or giving information to others so they can be the leader and and finishing up. Absolutely. And the thing is, and what I love that you're getting at here is like, it's really about kind of unveiling or exposing these components Mm -hmm. identify us as the leader and identify those areas of strength and weakness that we know we're here to experience with others. So, you know, one thing that I was just telling Karen, (laughs) which I, I love, I had the most amazing weekend and I had fun. I met my partner's family with my children. So I had met my partner's family, but this time I had to bring my kids and it was, it was precious. I absolutely loved it. This family's funny. They're witty. They're smart. They're present. Um, I loved it. It was just such a great experience, but because I have like many of us, my own traumas around performance and creation, 
I was in guilt and in judgment of self for like, no, not creating, not showing up to my platform, not doing the, executing the ideas that I have in my head and not wanting to just like collect them here and not utilize them, not do something with them. And so I started to give myself a migraine. Now, for most of us, we might get the migraine because we've overdone it. <laughs> I overdo it all the time, but for some reason, when I'm doing what I love, it's like, you know, you hear about breatharians or you hear about people who just like don't eat for a long time. I can, I can do that because I'm somehow being nourished a different way. I just, it's like the soul is being fed a different way. The body's getting nutrients a different way. It's being fed, it's being nourished. So in my case, I have this tendency to get these migraines when I'm not doing what I want to do. So this was the funny part where I had Karen kind of giggling earlier. Um, I was able to identify in this experience <laughs> through the assistance of what, watching my emotions and watching my thoughts and not overly stating them, but my partner definitely telling me, Janet, what is going on? I can feel you. <laughs> I was able to pinpoint that I am difficult. That I am stubborn. Mm -hmm. That's why we get along, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> that I have tunnel vision, that I am arrogant, that I am determined, that I am narcissistic at times. And what's fabulous about this, and I have mentors' voices coming forward right now with this, okay, is as I was sitting here, you know, most of you would perceive that as negative qualities. And I call them qualities. Um, but I ask you this, would you want to be led by someone who's only humble? Would you want to be led by someone who is not a visionary? Would you want to be led by someone who's only ever giving and allows their company to tank? Threatening your job. Would you like to be led by someone who only functions in what the traditionally great qualities are of a human? And this is where your wholeness comes into play. Because my friends, especially if you are a leader, you are likely, you likely have moments of arrogance and you likely have moments of humbleness. You likely have moments where you have to be controlling. <laughs> And you likely have moments where you wish someone else would take the lead and control things for a moment and make some plans. Yeah. The idea is that honoring the dynamic of the wholeness and really standing in the knowing of who you are is actually what makes you a greater and more authentic leader. It also helps you employ those or take the support from those that are stronger at a certain trait or skill or task or knowing than you are. So sometimes as leaders, we'll come in and try to do it all ourselves as well. But we forget that just as difficult as we may be in one area in our life or stubborn, someone else is not. <laughs> at this moment in time. Yeah. At and at this any moment, moment in time, yeah. because I think we all have those same or similar characteristics. Every one of us, it's just yeah. a question of how often do they show up and how are people, how are leaders utilizing those things? When you know that you are absolutely, positively, without a doubt, knowing that your program, your product, your business is providing a fantastic opportunity to make a huge difference in this world. And somebody comes along and said, oh no, you got to scrap it all. Get rid of it. Start over. This is no good. Are you going to listen to that person or to your heart? Yeah. That's when you need to be stubborn, but you can be stubborn in a very nice way saying, no, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm sticking with this because I know I know that with the right crew around me, the right resources, the right support, I can do this. I can be a leader in this. I can't do it alone. I need help. Yeah. But and then, you know, and I'll take that even deeper, Karen. Like for those of you who are struggling, even identifying the 
the fact that you want to launch something or try something more entrepreneurially, are you that voice? Are you the voice that's saying, that's it, scrap it, burn it to the ground. I will tell you what, sometimes I am. <laughs> there have been moments I'm like, great, we're moving forward. And this is beautiful and this is perfect. And look at how easily this came together. And then like one slight mishap might be like, that's it, done. Yeah, right. it's the it, it's because Garden. we focus on the negative all the time, right? Yes, exactly. And, I had to take that opportunity, Karen, because you know me, like the anxiety sets in, and then I start to really look at my world, and I say, "Oh crap, Janet, you're the one creating all of this internal drama." <laughs> so, the question to ask, my friend Janet, and everybody else out there, the question to ask is. What is really important to you in this moment? Yeah. And what action are you taking to make sure that you honor that importance? Absolutely. Absolutely. So here was my, uh, here was my takeaway from this weekend. Um, I remembered, and this is something that I was sharing with Karen a little while ago. I remembered that as I got more present to kind of help my migraine along, that there is nothing that I will experience or you will experience nothing that is off task really because everything's communicating with you and showing you everything you need to know at that moment. So my takeaways from this week when were brilliant, they were whole, they were integrative. They were exactly what I needed. They were loving. It was more connection, more bonding. Um, being able to see my own mirror. So many things that came forward in that holistic manner for me that had I not gone the lengths to just kind of neutralize the migraine and look at it more objectively instead of all consumingly, would I have gotten the yumminess of that entire experience? So even if you sit down to watch a movie, I actually don't watch television very often, but when I do, it's like the universe knows, all right, we got her seated for a whole, like, this is it. What she's about to watch is about to give her a whole shift in integration. And oh my gosh, friends, I, sometimes I have left movie theaters almost like shaking and feeling the entire DNA structure of the body shifting because I needed to see that. I needed to see something in there that was for me. So learning to become more present <laughs> has been a challenge for me oftentimes in my life. I'm oftentimes in the, in the clouds, in the ethers, wondering reading the energy, draining my adrenals. Um, but Being the inspiration for everybody else, but not yourself. Mm -hmm, girl, yeah. That was a nice loving little bitch slap, Karen. I like it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I think we're friends well enough. I can do stuff like that now. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, uh-huh. Keep it up. I'm into it. <laughs> you know, but, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, look at us both. But yeah, so ultimately- honoring where you are at that moment and what is it that you want right then and there because it wants you back. So what do you think are the ideal qualities of a whole leader, Janet? Oh, my friend, it is basically the ideal qualities of almost every person, right? The idea being, do you know when you need to take charge and do you know when you need to stick back? Do you know when it's time to vocalize and communicate? And do you know when it's time to observe? Do you know when it's time to say, to bring up an opinion and challenge another person? Do you know when it's time to speak your truth versus observe another's truth? I would almost say, you know, when I consider leadership, knowing how to navigate waters. You don't want the person who's sailing a cargo ship to panic all of a sudden when the waves get rough, right? And not know how to go about it. Sorry, you hear my cat in the background and not know how to navigate that, not know how to, to respond neutrally to what's needed in that moment. You want that person to possibly be controlling, tunnel vision, determined, <laughs> arrogant. Or would you want the person who's navigating through a massive storm and massive waves to be humble, quiet, 
not, not taking charge. So it's about recognizing that knowing when to lead and knowing when to let another lead is really ultimately a very general way to, to describe it. But knowing that sometimes a lot of those characteristics that we will describe another human with negatively, like narcissist, that narcissist might be keeping an entire ship afloat. That could very well be. Absolutely. And learning how to respond as opposed to react. Yeah. And, and I, I like, I've gotten to the point now where I recognize the fact that reacting is not always very helpful unless it is a quick response that you have ingrained, like slamming on the brakes of the car if you're going to hit a child, you know, that, that's, a re, that's a reaction, but it's also an ingrained response. Absolutely. And, and it's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so understanding reaction versus response is important as well for that type of leader. And it doesn't mean there's not humanness within us that we won't be reactive. Um, I think, that, you know, sometimes reaction can almost be quicker than response and that can save a life at times or it can cause a life. But how are we really kind of taking those energies and navigating them? Exactly. And it does take practice, but the fact, and it is a fact, we are all leaders. We are all followers. We mm -hmm. all react. We all respond. We all are narcissistic. We all are humble. We all are all of those different emotions at different moments in time. And the question is, how do we want to be in this time? And one of the questions I ask myself is, would my negative reaction, quote, negative, whatever that might be, with my ranting and raving and screaming and saying, I want it my way, my way is the best way, and that's all there is to it. Is that really going to make a, my desires come to fruition? Sometimes, mm -hmm. yes. Most of the time, not. I, I, I tell you a short story before we leave. I, uh, very simply filled up my glass with seltzer to come on this call today. And I got my top caught on the drawer handle and my glass went flying and smashed all over the floor. Oh, gosh. Um, fortunately, it didn't break, but all the seltzer went all over the floor. The glass ended up underneath the table and all that. And I could have easily just said, dang it, a lot worse and started screaming. And why is this happening? And I thought, you know what? It happened. What can I do about it now? And if I get really upset, is that going to help our conversation with the energy that I'm bringing to it of anger, frustration at myself? Is that helpful? to our conversation today, especially about the qualities of a leader. And so I, I, okay, fine. What can I do instead? I can clean it up. I could leave it there and let my husband slip on the floor or let him clean it up or, or whatever. But so I wiped it up. I said, darling, it's all wet in there because I spilled an entire glass. The entire kitchen is covered with water. It's okay. The floors needed cleaning anyway. So I have better things to do. I'm going to go talk to Janet today and build my glass up with some more seltzer. And here we are. If I had gotten really upset and reacted as I could have easily and beat myself up, that would not have provided the energy that is my intention of enjoying today. 
because that is my intention when I wake up is to enjoy today. What do I need to do to make sure that I feel joy today? Perfect. And it's simple, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you love simple? It's, it's simple. a choice. It is a choice. Yeah. Yeah. I like simple. I like watching simple on you because I think most who watch me are like, that's complicated. But I'm learning simplicity. The more it doesn't have to be as yeah. hard, my friend. It does it not have to be as hard. It really does. All of our listeners. It doesn't. It, but just like you have to witness yourself go into arrogance to find the humbleness. I've been witnessing myself going into the complexity to find the simplicity. Yeah. So and it all serves purpose for all of us. It's a learning experience. And yeah. without one side, you can never see the other. Yeah. Exactly. Everything has two sides, right? Yes. Two sides of the same coin. Absolutely. Well, my friend, our time is pretty well up here, but thank you so much for joining us for another Everyday Wholeness show. And please be sure to like and subscribe and visit us on the YouTube channel by the same name and like and subscribe there as well. And until next time, be whole. <laughs>